After the conflicts at Shimonoseki, being forced to lower tariffs and open up new ports to the Western powers, the shogunate government was, naturally, feeling a bit vengeful. By September 13th, orders had gone out to around 30 Western and Southern provinces to prepare troops and supplies to move out to punish the Chosu. The government then restored the law stating that every daimyo, or lord, was required to live within Edo every other year, a rule that in 1862 had been allowed to become practically obsolete. Now, while the government didn't need to have any other reason to launch a punitive campaign than recent events, it did in fact have a solid reason and told the clans this very thing. The Chosu were building up their forces. They had been reorganizing and rearming their armies. Ronin, low-ranking warriors, peasants, and really any volunteer was accepted, trained, and placed within a company. Not only that, but they had gotten rid of the council and then centered the administration in the city of Hagi. By August 24, 1864, the Pakufu, or shogunate, had officially received the go-ahead from the imperial court to launch their campaign against the Chosu domain. They then took charge of the armies formed from the western provinces. Yoshinobu would negotiate with Satsuma to have Saigo Takamori act as chief of staff for the shogunate armies. Tokugawa Yoshikatsu, the daimyo of Nagoya, would be the commander-in-chief. He would then set up his headquarters in Hiroshima. December 14th, everything was moving perfectly into place for the Bakufu. Saigo Takamori, as we discussed in an earlier video, didn't have any animosity against the Chosu. He felt they even shared the same goal, increasing imperial authority. Though, he definitely kept his intentions to himself for the most part. Thus, he wanted to avoid war entirely. On the 25th of November, he left Osaka. He then used two monks, one from Awari, the province that Tokugawa Yoshikatsu was from, and the other from Iwakuni, which was a dependent on the Mori clan of the Chosu domain. These monks went back and forth to negotiate with the opposing sides, with Saigo Takamori playing the middleman. In the way Karu, remember he was one of the people that had gone to Europe, well, he convinced the Mori that surrendering did not mean that they wouldn't be able to defend themselves in the future. Three members of the council and military were to commit seppuku. Their heads would then be sent to Hiroshima to be inspected to make sure that they were the right people that had committed the act. On December 16th, Tokugawa Yoshikatsu examined the heads. Technically, it was up to him if he wanted to accept surrender or commit the Tokugawa shogunate forces to attack. He wanted three demands met. One, the Mori clan send a letter of apology. Two, the castle at Yamaguchi be vacated. The expulsion of Sanyo Sanetomi, who had been exiled for his part of a coup in 1863. With that, Yoshikatsu disbanded the shogunate expeditionary forces. Now, despite the Chosu domain seeming to back down, not all would. On January 13, 1865, Takasugi Shinsaku would lead a company of men and rebel at Shimonoseki. The next day, he went to Mitajiri and captured a ship, and then returned back to Shimonoseki. Now, even though this was obviously an issue, Tokugawa Yoshikatsu, on February 12th, left Hiroshima and returned to Osaka. In Edo, the reasons why Yoshikatsu hadn't gone ahead with the campaign wasn't understood by the shogunate council. From what they could see, their forces were more than capable of forcing the Mori of Chosu into an unconditional surrender. They didn't understand that the shogunate forces, which were really nothing more than just a gathering of soldiers from different provinces, had no cohesion and they weren't a fully functional army. That's not to mention, it was well known by now how hostile the Chosu population felt. It wouldn't just be a fight between the armies, but the very people itself. Sometime in January, the government official, 
Matsume Takahiro went to Kyoto to try and convince Yoshinobu to go back to Ido. Two months later, the officials Abe Masato and Hanjo Munehide would enter Kyoto with 3,000 armed men. They also brought with them 300,000 ryo worth in gifts to give the civil nobles. Both Yoshinobu and the imperial court reprimanded them. They were then sent to Ido to let the shogun, Iomochi, know to visit the emperor. Iomochi could not exactly say no. However, they did not want the shogunate to look weak and obedient. So, on May 6, 1865, another appeal to south and western provinces for men to launch a second campaign against the Chosu happened. On the 9th of June, the shogun left Ido with a large escort modeled after Tokugawa Ieyasu's army in 1600. By the 14th, Iomochi saw the emperor and had to explain why a second campaign was wanted. It was explained that the province had not reduced its weapons that it owned and was controlled by extremists and was in fact in contact with foreigner smugglers. The emperor didn't renew the attack immediately. The shogun then went to Osaka to set up his headquarters. Now it should be noted that Yoshinobu did not want the war to be renew renewed. It should also be noted that at the end of 1864, Leon Roche, the representative of France, had become the shogunate's advisor to modernize its military. The government was no longer the main way towards modernization. Foreign traders sold to anyone willing to buy. Plus, partly due to its position, Satsuma was modernizing its military at a rate that rivaled the shogunate. By May 21, 1866, Japan was essentially fully open, which only increased this. Speaking of Satsuma, efforts were being made just before this to create a bond between them and the Chosu. Sakamoto Rimoma, who came from Tosa and previously had went to a naval school in Kobe with the hope of founding a trade and transport company, would be in touch with both Satsuma and Chosu. He would arrange a meeting between Kido Takayoshi and Shinagawa Yajiro from Chosu and Komatsu Takawaki and Saigo Takamori in Kyoto. After weeks of talks in March, they made a pact. Saigo would get a pardon for Chosu. Satsuma would send 2,000 men to Kyoto and 1,000 to Osaka in case of war and to build an imperial state together. The shogun, Iomochi, wouldn't be deterred from military action, despite the fact that Yoshinobu, the commander-in-chief of the first campaign, Yoshikatsu, and the provinces did not really want to go to war. Now, despite this, Iomochi and his council went ahead with it. He would set himself up as the commander-in-chief in his headquarters in Osaka, and Tokugawa Mochitsugu as commander of the advance guard. July 1866, three shogunate-aligned ships bombarded a small island on the inland sea and landed men. The entire population of the small island fought the shogunate troops tooth and nail. Nowhere were the shogunate troops greeted. The resistance was organized by Chosu officials, and merchants had given up their possessions to aid in this resistance. Many, in fact, would become ruined by this. July 23rd, at night, Takatsugi Shinsaku launched a surprise attack on the shogunate-aligned ships. He then attacked and retook the island. After that, he would land in Kyushu on the 28th. He had the intention of taking Kokura, but was caught under fire from shogunate ships. Instead, he left by himself and made his way to Nagasaki and begged Sakamoto Ryoma for help. He, of course, agreed. Sakamoto would then go to Shimonoseki, board a Chosu ship, and attack the shogunate boats, thereby surprise at dawn on the 12th of August. Takatsui then advanced towards Kokura, held by the government official Ogasawara Nagayuki, who had enclosed himself within. This would be the beginning of a three-week-long siege. As shogunate troops tried to force their way into the Chosu province, Ambushes and aggression was there to greet him. Revolts spread, first on the Chosu border, and then in Osaka. And then, finally in Ito, Takatsugi realized public opinion was in their favor. He then made a public speech encouraging the peasants around Kokura to revolt. 
He promised them really anything that they needed that they would receive if they did this. After a while had passed, he sent some of his own men forward holding up a flag of the Hosokawa, who were allies of Nagayuki. The guards opened up the gate, thinking that they were allies. It was just a ruse so that they would lower their defense. Takatsugi Shinsaku then gave the command, and the gates were rushed. The castle of Kokura was taken on September 9th. A bit before this happened, in Osaka, with the revolt dying down, the shogun died of a heart attack on August 29th at the age of 20. It was suspect at this time that it was the result of a thymine deficiency. Of course, at this time, it was rumored that Yoshinobu, his guardian, had him poisoned. On September 27th, the news of Iomochi's death was finally published. At this news, the shogunate troops, who were already feeling discouraged, felt the blow of the news and morale plummeted. They then went into a full retreat. Ogasawa Nagayuki succeeded at Kokura in fleeing, but his men were left behind and accepted defeat. At Usukukushima Island, a peace was negotiated with the Chosu. Now, technically, nothing was settled. Chosu would continue the very things that had caused the shogunate to attack them. The imperial court still viewed the Chosu as rebels, and the castle at Yamaguchi still stood. The Chosu, however, would lose its best military leader on October 5th. Takatsuki Shinsaku died from tuberculosis. During the entire campaign, the man had focused on his work instead of his health. Welcome to the end of the video. Click that video right there and it'll tell you all about amphibious Japanese tanks. Pretty interesting. Or click that playlist right there and it'll tell you about all kinds of tools and weaponry of the samurai and further.